Here I am with my finished up glued up doors. All I've done so far with these doors is glue them up. Right now I'm only going to do 80 grit to knock these down flush, these edges and stuff. And then I'm going to clean up the edges along here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little chamfer edge around all the corners. Then we'll knock it down from 80 to 120 to 220. Um, panel sanded. Everything's good on the inside. It just needs these edges sanded up front of the face and the frame and the back. Start with back side first. That way any accidental bump ups or scrape ups from any material that's still down here put on the back of the frame. The front will do last and end up with a nice smooth finish. Here's my door face after sanding the, each joint. You can see right here on this joint it's fairly nice smooth continue to take the rest of them down to 80 grit so here I've got just a scraper I'll scrape off the glue on the back side I'll flip it over and then I will actually do the front side that way if there's anything that happens on the when I'm doing the front side it only happens on the back side which isn't going to be visible very much now because this is the finished side that will be on the outside. I want to do this side last when I'm sanding, so I'll flip it over, sand this side down first, flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a chamfer edge on here, about a quarter of an inch, all the way around my outside of my front of my door panel. It'll really break this edge, make it much more kind of nice. It adds a little bit of variety to it also. It's really easy. Got my chamfering bit on, and you want to start on your, your styles that have the end grain first and basically route along here, because if it splinters out here, your next pass will be down this style here, and then along these end grain here and end grain here and if it splinters out again you continue to chase the chip out so uh, you end up with no chip out that way Okay, now what we have here is a corner cabinet door. You only want to chamfer if you're going to put a decorative edge, like a chamfer or so, on the outside of the fold. So the way these doors work is you have two doors that go together and bisect each other just like this. You don't want to actually put a decorative edge where these two doors meet right here because it just won't look right. So what you want to do is you want to do the decorative edge here, here, here if you're actually routing the edge. Now if you're doing like some sort of inset route or along here, you'd probably want to go ahead and do that here too just to keep it looking even. But for me, for all practical purposes, if I was to do a chamfer edge down this side and then one on each one of these panels here, it would look kind of silly. So basically all I have to do is chamfer three of the edges. So I'll pick out the three of the best sides and I'll do that and then the the other one will be just a flat 90.
routed my three edges. And now when they go to the doors go together, I'm just gonna overlap them just so slight so I don't have to hold it. It'll look pretty much just like that. It'll have a nice clean close here. It'll have a decorative end here, decorative end here, and as well as the other three sides. So that's how you'd want to do a corner cabinet door pair. You'll also notice that I went really slow when I got down here to this end, so it only created little feathers, hairs sticking out as opposed to chipping out. If it does chip out, my best advice is if you're lucky, you can find the chip and glue it back in and then hand sand it back flat. If not, you could possibly put uh, some wood filler in or another piece of wood or even mix up some glue with some sawdust and fill it back in. For me, these are going to be painted. The underlying substrate, of whether it's wood or wood filler or something else that's not pretty if it's not stained, looks okay. As well as if you notice here, my panel goes side to side, the grain pattern does, as opposed to up and down, which if I was going to stain or just clear finish this, I would have the grain pattern going up and down as opposed to side to side. That way it matches the styles. But since these are going to be painted, there's no need to really care so much about your grain pattern because you're going to cover it up. Unless you're using an open pour grain, of course, in which case then you might want to make sure all your grain patterns are consistent, otherwise you'll end up with some open pores going up and down, some going side to side. The alternative to that is if you're using an open grain wood is using some sort of pore filler that will fill in all the pores. So in order to drill my holes for my hinges, I'm using the Bloom cupped Blue Motion hinges. They're the compact Blue Motion hinges. What I need to do is I need to drill a 35 millimeter hole and then two pilot holes. Craig makes a great jig for that. It's the Craig Concealed Jig Kit. It comes with a 35 millimeter Forstner bit and basically you take and you affix this into your drill, lock it down in here like this, and then you drill out your hole. And it has great little measuring guides along here so you can place. At least for mine, you need a 16th inch pilot hole bit for drilling in here. I have a piece of tape here marked at 7 eighths of an inch away from the tip. That is to prevent it from going through its depth of the screws plus the half inch depth of the, the jig itself. The hinges itself call for a three millimeter distance between here and the edge. So these have cams on it that you can adjust to the right millimeters just by turning them. And then when you push them up against the frame, it has the correct spacing. Now, when dealing with hinges, you should always make sure that your hinges are compatible with the jig because not all the holes may be the same. In the case of my Bloom compact hinges, they do line up perfectly in here. I've used this before to drill other holes and it works pretty great. You basically just need to follow the directions for assembly and usage on the jig and it works wonders. If you want to see me tune all that in, tune into my other video that is basically using this jig and how to use it. So my hinges came with the two screws for the hinge itself and then the truss screw to go into the face frame. This screw, since it's a larger screw, requires an eighth inch pilot hole as opposed to the hinge screws that only require a 16th inch pilot screw. What I like to do first is I like to pre-drill all these holes into my doors prior to painting or staining them because what happens is when you're moving stuff around, you might scuff up your paint, you might scuff up some your stain or your finish or whatever. In the case of this, what you're supposed to do is wherever you decide you're gonna position it, I'm gonna actually put mine at three and a half inches from the edge on the scale here or zero on the center line. So like my 42 inch doors that I have, I'll put a center line on here and I'll just line it up at zero. For the top and bottom, for the two hinge doors, I'm only gonna do three and a half, which is kind of a, a standard I've found on most doors. So I'll do that and you're supposed to use a clamp here and a clamp here to make sure this doesn't slip. You wanna make sure this is pushed firmly up against these cams so that you get the right distance from the edge of your frame. So I'm gonna get drilling on this particular door here. It's going to not take too overly long. Once I do that, then you know this door will essentially be ready for finish sanding and then painting.
but you want to drill these pilot holes here for your hinges if they line up with your hinges while you've still got this mounted and you end up with a perfect concealed hinge door cup that will handle a, a bloom compact blue motion hinge with the pilot holes drilled in there two holes. So I've got all my holes drilled out on all my doors. This is a three hole, three hinge door, as you can see. Right after doing that, I took some uh, wood filler and I filled in any, any imperfections anywhere I found them. Cracks in the where the uh, butt joints didn't f fully seal in, where the, where the railing style, where there's a little gap. Any place on the backs, fronts, any place where there was imperfections. My next step for the doors is simply sanding them down. So you can see this huge stack of 42 inch doors for the uh, cabinets. All the doors have this nice chamfer edge around them. So everything's coming together pretty good and we're moving on forward. So for anyone that's curious, this is the pile of concealed hinge drillings. All these wood chips, as you can see, they, they look like if you have a old hand style pencil sharpener one that you put in your hand and twist the pencil in that's what they look like um, this pile started out five inches deep and about uh, a little bit smaller than that but uh, yeah it's it, there's a lot of shavings there from all these doors 26 doors about half of them three hinge the other half two hinge so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos